So the rumor is you guys want me to take a look at Jalen Hurts' OTA throw and tell you what I think. All right, y'all. Let's do it. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Stephen Heider, Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Hey, what's good, guys? This may be the first, second, third time you caught my content and you enjoyed today's discussion. If I can ask you to do me a huge solid here, guys, hit that subscribe button. We just crossed over 5,000 subscribers. We're heading towards 10,000. I'd love for you to be a part of that equation. I need you to subscribe to do that to my OG subscribers. If I can ask you guys to just keep hitting that like button, keep smashing the thumbs up button, help me spike the algorithm. And get this in front of potentially new audience members. Kind of convert into our little community here, if you will. All right, y'all. So, uh, I guess Vacation Steve is back, as some of y'all were trying to call me. <laughs> it's all good, guys. I wasn't on vacation. I've been trying to build this studio for y'all, all right? I did see some of the uh, the rundown. I saw Mike's video. I saw LB's video. where They were, you know, kind of talking about, you know, this, this throwing motion. What we see from the throwing motion of Jalen Hurts. And I know Mike kind of asked me specifically to kind of take a look at it and give everybody my thoughts on like kind of what I thought about it. I want to start off by saying this, guys. This is very important. You can learn stuff. I can definitely tell what he has and has not been working on just by watching that throwing motion. But I do want to caution and I do want to say one thing that I think is very, very, very important, which is habits are hard to form. Habits are hard to break. We all know the saying about 10,000 hours, right? So, while we know what he's working on by looking at these ideal circumstances and situations, I cannot promise you, I cannot predict how he's going to react when there's a blitz in his face, right? When all everything goes to, you know what, in the handbasket, how do you react in that moment? That's for future Jalen to show us, right? So, I just want to state that out, right, guys? I don't know how it's going to react in actual live game situations, but I did notice a couple of things that kind of uh, caught my attention here about Jalen Hurts in this little clip, so... Without further ado, guys, let's bring up the video, let's watch it, and let's talk about it. Alright, so the first time, I just want to run it through the video. I want to see what I'm seeing real quick, and then I'll just kind of explain it as we're watching it, and then I'll I'll go through and kind of highlight the areas that I think are important, alright? So to begin with, the first thing I'm going to say is this is a semi-roll. Uh, you still use like a, a one, three, five, or seven step drop, well, not a one, but a three or five or seven step drop in a semi-roll, but that's clearly a semi-roll out. Look at the shoulder. Yeah, good, good shoulder movement here, guys. See how that shoulder is not opened up? He's got the shoulder closed. He's waiting to the last second to open it up. I'd still say there's a bit of a wind-up there, if I'm being honest. But I saw a couple of things here that, that cue me on into what he's been doing in the offseason. To begin with, he, he seems to really be focusing on that front shoulder. So anytime we talk about clearing in midline, you heard uh, Justin and I when we did our, our you know live stream together. You know Justin being a guy who's a professional quarterback looking to get work in the CFL currently. You know, Justin talked a lot about clearing a center line, that idea of, of moving up in the pocket, right? And the fact that a lot of quarterbacks are taught when you clear a center line, right? So you clear the center line and then you open up. There's a belief that somehow, some way that correlates to getting your hips more involved in the throw, and then you can get a little bit more muster behind the throw, especially on a vertical concept. Truth be told, I don't subscribe to that theory. I'm not going to sit here and, and downplay every quarterback coach that does that's that's not what i'm here to do i'm just saying personally i believe a little bit more in the tom house's theory the, the guy who john hurts is working with which is that power really comes from the legs up right it's like a golf swing it's this idea of bio like bio sequencing and you have to have everything biomechanic sequencing everything's got to be in correlation with it right big downside i can see here guys we can't see the lower half i don't i don't like not being able to see the lower half of the throw because i can't tell if we're seeing that uh, deviation between the upper and the lower half. I can't tell you that, guys. I have no clue if uh, what's going on there in terms of that. So hard to say that particular point of the sequencing. But I want to show you the shoulder. Watch the shoulders, guys. Forget all the drop back stuff. Don't worry about all that. It's not important right now. This is a semi rollout. All right. Watch that shoulder. Look, look, look. See how that shoulder is not pulled back? Look at him stepping up to clear that center line. Look, look. Shoulder's still good. Shoulder's good. Shoulder's good. He's got that shoulder closed. Now he's going to come up from the ball carriage into the throwing motion. Nice to row. Yeah, man, that looks good. I'm going to be honest with you guys. That looks good. He's not he's not opening that shoulder. He's keeping that shoulder closed to the last minute. Uh, actually, when Justin and I were talking, he talked about how Drew Brees was a guy that would almost all the way up to the point of throwing the ball nearly kept his shoulders closed. So, I mean, we could definitely see Tom House's influence there. I can see it. 
I will say, if you watch coming out of that ball carriage, there are a few things that concern me here with uh, what I'm seeing here. Not a huge concern, guys. It's just, you know, Carson Wentz did this too, man. It's a bit of a wind-up delivery. You can see the elbow dips just a little bit. You can see those shoulders. They're starting to kind of go just a little up, right? All together, though, this is a good sequence, man. It's a good throw in motion. But, I mean, there's some there's some fine-tuning here that has to happen. It's a strong thrower, man. Jalen Hurts is a really strong guy. That's a strong thrower of the football right there, guys. I'm going to tell you right now. He's got strength behind the throw. The other thing I notice is uh, I call it the Pledge of Allegiance. So uh, if you ever watch Tom Brady throw a football, guys, so this is his offhand, right? So he comes up from the ball carriage. He's coming up to throw the ball. After he releases it, you'll see he does this shoulder touch, right? I call it the Pledge of Allegiance. It's just a proper follow-through. It's keeping everything tight to the body. You know, Tom actually touches his shoulder as he kind of falls out of the, the sequence of everything. I always just kind of brought it up to it was like really close, kind of like what Jalen's doing to where it's really close. It almost looks like you're doing the Pledge of Allegiance, if you will. That's why I call it the Pledge of Allegiance, kind of what I taught quarterbacks. But that's what I see here, guys. I see a guy who's been working on the biomechanical sequencing of throwing a football. I mean, it's quite clear. I can't state, I can't say how things are going to work out. I mean, who knows, guys, when pressure's in his face, how that's going to work out. Like I said, guys, yeah, the throwing the delivery to me, is, it's still a little elongated. But to be honest with you, I also don't love the ball tap. I don't know if you guys can see that ball tap. I'm not a big fan of ball tapping. Uh, to be fair, though, a lot of guys do it. It's not, you know, when you're playing at the NFL level, ball tap's not slowing you down, guys. It's just, you know, when I work with high school and middle school age kids, that's not something that I like to see them doing. I don't like to see them actually patting the football. But nonetheless, man, I mean, this looks good. I mean, it's a good throw. Good throw. It looks good in the shades, too, man. He's out here, uh, he's got the whole, uh, got the whole look going on. For a minute there, I couldn't tell if that was Jalen Hurts or Zach McPherson for a second. Because Zach McPherson always likes to wear those shades, too. But yeah, I mean, he's coming through the sequence of the football well. I mean, I, I see nothing here to really gripe too much about, guys. I, I think he's I think he's definitely taking some steps over the uh, offseason to kind of refine that mechanical motion of throwing the football. That's what they mean by biomechanics, guys. I will say it's hard to tell uh, disassociation between the hips and the shoulders, guys. I can't tell that from this clip. I can't see anything to do with the feet, so... You know, obviously disassociation means, you know, you, you want to make sure that those hips, and you know, it starts at the hips and then follows up, goes up through the shoulders, out through the arm, basically, guys. So you want to make sure you have hip dissociation here. I can't tell that from this throw. I don't see anything that would lead me to believe that there's not, but I can know, you know, I can't really confirm or deny, to say the least here. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all's time and attention. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I got some more stuff planned for you guys. I'm waiting for this HDMI cable to get here so I can do some stuff on the big screen in terms of breaking down film for myself to show you guys where I can really sh slow down the sequencing of things and really show you guys stuff that's going on. Uh, I forgot to put my mic in, but I do have my mic stand for it for the desk. That's all up and running, guys. I I'll probably throw in some shelves behind me and stuff like that. But hey, guys, we're doing some business here. All right, y'all. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next video.